All right, so let me go ahead and get started. So the first shirt we're going to make is going to be a mega bling shirt, okay? So if you guys have been watching us for a long time, this is a shirt that we actually made three years ago, but with 4th of July coming in the summer, I wanted to make it again because I love it so much and it is like a super intense project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first start weeding my vinyl. So this is gonna be a multi-deck mega bling shirt. Now, when I say mega bling, I'm not joking around. Um, our rhinestone design is going to be about 18 inches tall and 13 inches wide. Okay, so I'm not joking. It's going to be really big, but it's going to be super cool. So to ease us into it, I'm going to go ahead and start weeding my vinyl. So let's go over here. And I am working with three colors here. So I have the Caesar Rainbow White. I really enjoy using the Rainbow White because it's got those iridescent sparkles in it that kind of reflect a little bit more light. Then I'm using red glitter. And then I am using blue. So um, a lot of times when I do 4th of July stuff, I will do um, royal blue. One thing to keep in mind is that I am uh, pressing on a black shirt. So royal blue on black, like by itself, isn't the best. Okay, it doesn't show up as well. Let me grab this to kind of show you in contrast. I see a little piece over here. So here is, this is royal blue. So when you put this red, white, and blue together, it looks awesome. However, let's put it on the shirt. So you put on the shirt here. I mean, like it looks okay. But one thing to keep in mind is that when you're doing a word, your word won't be as legible. So whenever we do something like this, you want to use this blue. Someone said microphone. Can my cord, is it caught on something? Sorry, I'm being difficult. I'm just trying to make it so everyone can hear it. I got it. Cool. All right, so we are doing, again, to review, rainbow white, red, and blue, the normal blue. So we have several, we have old gold, I mean not old blue, true blue, blue something else, royal blue, and then blue. So this is blue, like no fanciness about it, okay? So I'm gonna go over and we're gonna weed out the first color. So this is our white. So for this design, the main part of it is going to be in our rainbow white for a couple reasons. It's part of the patriotic, or, you know, our national colors or flag colors or whatever. Um, but honestly, if you can do major sections in white or things that need to be red and white, um, that's going to give you the most success. Now, don't forget when you are making your products, design and and colors are good, they are important, don't forget that. But also legibility is just as important. So a lot of times what I try to do is if I have something with multiple colors, if it's going on, especially like something patterned, I try to do at least outlines in white or sections in white because that just kind of, in my opinion, balances out things and you know makes it easier to read. So you can see I'm just going, I'm weeding out my design. Um, with something like this, and you guys know it's my favorite thing to kind of preach at you, make sure you're doing your test cuts. You should not have issues weeding this. Um, so with this, I just did my test cuts, made sure I had them in correctly, and it's weeding no problem. Um, so uh, someone said, when I used royal on black, I did white outline, so it did show up. Yes, if you are doing royal on black, do a white outline. That's your trick with something like that. For this particular design, um, I probably could have used Royal, but I think that there is, um, I don't know, more vibrancy, what's vibrant? Vividness, I think vibrancy is the word I'm looking for when I use blue as opposed to Royal blue. It just looks a little bit, you know, I don't know. I don't know another word besides more vibrant. Um, what's this ring thing on my hand? So this is technically a silicone nail polish holder. Um, so once upon a time, this was made to put your nail polish in here to paint your nails. Um, this is great for weeding. 
they have them all over people get them from amazon local stores whatever this particular one that i am using i got from craft chameleon um i did um purchase this at their booth at a show um why am i using this so for this design it doesn't super matter but i use it for when i weed smaller sections because i can just pick up my piece and throw it right in here and go on my merry little way okay so let's go ahead <coughs> oh sorry uh, let's take on my throat all of a sudden and weed out the middle section of our star now this part right here is a testament to doing test cuts and perfecting your cut settings. Now, um, you're gonna see why in just a second. Check this out. Look at this. Teeny, tiny little stars, and that teeny, tiny little point. Oh, where's my tool? Right up here. Check that out. No issue, did you see that? Did you see that? It, I didn't have an issue. I didn't even have to hold it down. So that was something where I did do my test cuts. I wanted to make sure I had a good cut with that. Now this cut was straight with the Silhouette software, okay? I did not use the wizard. I didn't even need the overcut feature. Don't tell Matt, but I didn't use it. Okay, so that's our first part. So that's the main part of our design. Let's go through here. Let's do our next section. All right, so this is like half of the star and the H for our design. So it's right here. So this blue is just so pretty. See that? It's just so pretty. Okay, so this is where my ring shines, okay? So I'm gonna uh, weed out these little stars and basically just use my little holder and these little parts go right in here. So it saves me a lot of time. I don't have to worry about my little weeded parts getting in the way or dropping on something. And they're super easy to just dump off into this ring. So this, this design, this right here will be the part, the weeding part that will take you the longest. But even then, it's not super bad. It's not like there's a bajillion stars on here. Okay. all weeded out really pretty so someone asked what settings do i use for my cameo so one thing to note and i say this all the time what works for me may not work for you okay there are a lot of different factors to consider when cutting um, one of them could be how old your cutter is one of them could be especially how old your blade is now if you've been cutting a while your blade could be starting to dull down so obviously your settings are going to change based on that. And then also depending on, maybe you have a different lot of vinyl. Um, and if you're using older vinyl, that might affect it. But here is my overall um, guideline that I use for cutting glitter. Um, this design is from TRW. Don't go look for it yet because you will regret it. There might be a code for it at the end. So check this out. So when I cut glitter, I keep my blade at five I do my thickness between 16 and 18, and then my speed typically at 10, but I do slow it down for detailed things like this, okay? Now do a test cut, see if that works for you, but I have found in this time frame of my blade and my machine, those are the settings that work best for me. All right, so let's do our last color. So we have our four. Check this out, no issues, easy peasy. Okay, so then I'm just gonna trim this little section off. I'll weed out the middle of that four too, don't worry. So I'll trim out this section. I'm gonna keep this for little customizations later. Then weed that out. Now, okay, so let me tell you something that I like to do. So a lot of times when we get to this point with our vinyl, and with our designs, uh, a lot of us will take our scissors and cut up through here and cut that out, right? How many of you do that? I'm sure a lot of you do that. Now, I try to get out of that habit, and let me tell you why. Um, when I am working with lighter colors of Easy Weed, or especially with Easy Weed adhesive, when I go to cut it, sometimes I cut too close to my vinyl, 
in the fact that um, there's a little piece of vinyl still on there. So when I press it, there's a little sliver on there, and I don't like that because I have to use vinyl remover. So what I do when I have a design like this is I actually peel it all the way off. That way I am not worrying about a little sliver of vinyl getting on my design, and then I'm all good from there. Joe, do they make rings and guy colors like blue or dark green? Um, yeah, I'm sure they do. But you know what? This is a nice color, Joe. I don't know why you don't like this mint green. It's very trendy. And don't you want to be in touch with what your customer is like, Joe? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so let me line this up to show you what this is going to look like, okay? Now, this design is pretty large, too. This design is almost a, a whole foot wide. Okay. So there is the color. So I love it. I think it looks really cute. And in this context, especially on top of black, I think that the normal blue is a little bit more vibrant than the royal blue in this situation. Now, if this were to go, if these colors were changed, so let's say I wanted to press this on a white shirt, which to be honest, I probably would do a white tank top, then I would swap this white for like a silver or, you know, like a, I would do like black silver, like the darker silver glitter. So it is still, you know, a patriotic color scheme. And then I would do royal blue for the, for the shirt. Okay, so we're all set there. Now, we are going to press this in a little bit, but what I've got going on, I'm going to kind of stand up here to show you. I've got a gigantic rhinestone design. So this right here, and then this. I've got three giant templates that I am going to work on for rhinestones, okay? So um, let me go over it and I'm gonna set up to start brushing in rhinestones so I don't need this ring. Let me kind of get these out of here. And then if any of you guys came in once I had started, don't forget that the shirts I make in this live, including this one that I'm working on right now, um, these are all gonna be given away. So I am choosing winners by likes, comments, and shares. So don't forget, don't be a little stalker as I like to be on social media. Say hi, tell you what you think, tell me what you like, because that will enter you into a giveaway. Okay, so this design is so large. This is gonna go up the back of the shirt, okay? This is huge. Um, it is so large that I actually had to break up this bottom spray. This is it, this going down here. This was broken up into two pieces because it was too big to cut on my silhouette no matter what. This, all the way down, um, if I would have rotated any way, it was 13 inches wide, okay? So I couldn't, I couldn't actually get that to go. So what I did is I broke it apart and I had it set like that. So keep an eye out, um, do keep an eye out for our YouTube channel. I'm gonna show you how to break apart this design and I'm going to reference it in both Silhouette and Corel Draw Wizard terms. And then don't forget, if you like this design, you should keep watching to towards the end, okay? Now this part right here um, is going to be the silver part of my design, okay? So in the red, white, and blue scheme, it's white, okay? Now this are, this is my crystal rhinestones. These are normal, plain crystal. I like to keep my really prominent colors in mason jars just because it's a personal preference of mine. But for this shirt, because this is Mega Bling, I am going to be using AB Crystal. Okay? Super sparkly. All right? So let's go ahead and start brushing. So what we're going to do is we're going to layer a giant three-color rhinestone design. Okay? So bear with me. The process may take longer than normal because this is gigantic. All right? So let's go ahead and pour our rhinestones. So the trick is you wanna put way more rhinestones than you think you need. We're gonna pour that on top. Now full disclosure, I did drop a bunch of rhinestones the other day. So I got a couple colors mixed in. In this case right here, there was a cobalt stone in here. <laughs> so just keep an eye. So for rhinestones, um, how many of you have done rhinestones before or are intimidated by it? Like, what would you rate your skill level with rhinestones? Okay, and while I'm waiting on that, let me start brushing these. Um, so the trick with your rhinestones is one, you wanna use way more rhinestones than you think you need. And the reason being is because our magic block template material, it's kind of raised, it's like a higher material. 
and rhinestones are pointed. So if they are right side up, they're gonna sit flat in there. If they're upside down, the point is gonna cause it to roll out, okay? Now, the way rhinestones roll out of these are other stones are like bumping it and, and basically rolling it out. So that's why we need a lot of rhinestones in there. It makes the process more fluid, makes it a lot easier. So check this out. My design is all filled in. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna move my stones to the side and kind of go from there, okay? So we're gonna get this out of the way. We have our design all set. And check it out, I'm missing a couple here. No big deal. Just bring a little pile on top and brush that over, all right? So we have these all set. And so here is the first part of our design. So I'm gonna go over and get these stones out of the way. I'm just gonna use my monster brush, kind of smooth them out over here and check it out. So while I'm doing this, let me answer questions that I know I get a lot. Um, this board, what am I working on, okay? So this is a chalkboard from Hobby Lobby. I paid, well, okay, let me talk about what I paid and what it's priced at. It is priced at $7.99. I used my 40% off coupon, so I paid roughly five bucks for this. Great part is it's really easy to slide your rhinestones around. It's easy to work with. It's got a nice dark color, which is easy to see kind of like the contrast of the sparkle of your stones. And also, because it is uh, only $5, I'm not concerned if I break it, which a lot of these boards <laughs> make it to trade shows, but they don't really make it home because, you know, we're rough on them. So it's also, because they're only $5, it's not a big deal if they break as well. Okay, so I'm just moving these out of the way and we're gonna start bringing our tape over. So I'm just checking, I have a couple sitting on top here. Let's just kind of go from there. All right, we got that, we got that. It's really important to kind of look at your board like this, straight on, to see if you have any rhinestones sitting on top because three colors, we want to make sure that um, we don't have any stones that are sitting on top that's gonna raise the overall design. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a big piece of transfer tape, all right? So let me go over here and I've stored templates on the back of this transfer tape, so I'm gonna use this transfer tape to do the hinge and I'm gonna cut a piece that's longer than my design oh here they are I couldn't find my scissors all right so let's get this little template off too all right so I'm gonna kind of set it up this way and I'm gonna cut it like about here all right and then some people are saying I use a Teflon cookie sheet to do rhinestones yeah you do not need a chalkboard for this okay this is not a necessary item the only ne necessary item or circumstance for rhinestones brushing them in is you need a flat surface so your that's loud so your table is fine cookie sheet is great uh chalkboard is fine okay here's the thing now with your transfer tape two a few things i'm not going to say two things a few things one i am using acrylic hot fix transfer tape that is our rhinestone transfer tape it's made to withstand the heat please do not use the decal transfer tape you use for sign vinyl two um when you drop it down just drop it okay do not start putting it down and second guess because you will touch some rhinestones your tape will move and then you're doing it you're doing it all over and no gabe i am not doing it with my eyes closed now with something like this, um, I am going to be making a hinge. Now the trick with layering your different colors is that you want your templates to line up in the same spot and you want your tape to always be anchored in the same spot. So this is my method, not everyone does it this way, but for me, I like doing that. Now I'm gonna smooth one side as close as I can to my design, okay? And then commit, just drop it down, drop it down, go, go, go. All right, so we have our design there. So I'm gonna use my brush to smooth it. Kind of go from there, all right? And I have an extra rhinestone here, so when I lift this up, I'm gonna take out the stone. So now I'm gonna smooth this part here to set up for my anchor, okay? So let's go ahead and lift this up. So look, that one stone didn't make it up. 
not a big deal. Oh, and it looks like because I had an extra in there, even though I looked. So let's go ahead and pick this one off. This one's an extra that I don't need. Smooth that back down. Oh yes, did someone hey, say how to clean up the rhinestones? Well, that's the longest part. You're gonna pick them up one by one. That's a lie, that's totally a lie. I'm not gonna do that. All right, so let's go ahead and move this to the side. All right, so now let's clean up the rhinestones. So I like for cleaning up rhinestones using my magic scoop and the small brush. So let's go through here, take these, So this has a funnel in it. It's gonna store all your stones in there and be all set. So one thing that I like to do is I like to kind of shake my board to get them off the side. I don't know if you guys do that, but I like to do that. That way if they're kind of like piled up on the side, it kind of loosens them up a little bit too. Now, a lot of times I like to clean up my stones while my tape is down because it gives me a nice, uh, you know, smooth surface. But the, the design is so big and large, I don't super love doing that. So I'm just going to kind of do it on top of the template here. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, I am cleaning up my stones between colors because... Um, so a lot of times there's different things you can do if you mix your stones, okay? So if you mix your SS6 and SS10 stones... Check this out, there in there. If you mix up your SS10 and SS6 stones, you can do things like little colanders or strainers and kind of funnel out one size from the other. And so it's not a big deal, whatever, you can, you can figure it out. <laughs> if you mix your colors, there is, there is no easy way out. You will not escape it, okay? If you mix up your colors, um, you have now jump-started your rainbow rhinestone bottle. Okay, so if you mix your colors, whatever, it happens to the best of us, don't throw them out. You can make a little bottle of rhinestones for rainbow colors and kind of use that as like a, a gimme. You know, if you do a text design or something like that, you can kind of offer it as rainbow colors. Okay, check that out. All right, so now we're gonna put it in our mason jar. I'm gonna take my cork out. Okay, and make sure you kind of shake it and get all the rhinestones out. Part of the reason why I have cobalt stones in my AB crystal is because I didn't shake it and um, some of the rhinestones made it in the bottle. Okay, so it looks like, hopefully the majority of you are doing okay with the live. It looks like some of you are, are having issues. Hopefully it's the rain and the Wi-Fi. All right, so here's color two. You can make it whatever color you want. Now keep in mind that these boxes are the same size. So these boxes are the same size because this is how we layer our colors and this is how we make sure everything is set in the right spot. So I'm gonna line up the corners and I'm going to line up my boxes on each other, okay? So let's go through here. So now we have our second color. One thing to note is that I don't see any of the black chalkboard underneath this, okay? What, that's important. If you see the black chalkboard underneath here, that means you are seeing a spot where a rhinestone is placed on your template underneath, and that means you're having overlapping stones. No one wants that, no one likes that, so just make sure you're readjusting it. All right, so now we're doing this, and this is all SS10 rhinestones, okay guys? I will not be using SS6s in my life. I don't, I never use SS6s to be honest with you. So if you, if I am using SS6s in something, I will make a big deal about it because I don't really like using them. All right, so let's do our little piles again. This is cobalt. It's a fun blue color, cobalt with a minor sprinkling of AB crystal because I make messes. So there's our first little firework. Let's go ahead and get these stones out of the side. Now, when you're brushing in rhinestones, keep in mind, you wanna have a light touch, you wanna do gentle circles, and keep your brush flat, okay? Do not fixate on a certain stone that you're trying to bump in because you're basically sticking a hard corner into your rhinestones and then you're just setting yourself up to knock more out, which no one really likes that. All right, so let's go through here. Let's do our little piles and then kind of 
get that. And then we're just brushing, brushing, brushing. All right. So keep in mind, you guys, this template we can reuse over and over again. Um, a lot of times people don't want to do rhinestones because the template material itself can cost more. Don't forget that the template material, yeah, is initial higher startup cost, I guess, but you're cutting it one time, all right? And then you're reusing this over and over again. I've actually used this template several times because I practiced and then I did my video and then I'm doing a live and, you know, all of that fun stuff. All right, so let's move these out of the way and we're ready for our second color, okay? So this is how we layer our colors. This box is always the same size. This tape is always in the same spot. So common sense would tell you that these are gonna line up. So when I bring this down, I'm, I'm kind of tugging it as far as I can this way. I'm keeping my tape tight. Drop it down. So now we have our two colors, okay? So check this out. And I'm gonna smooth down these edges right here and brush my stones in my, in my scoop now. So I'm just smoothing this down so I don't get stones underneath there. Easy peasy. So check it out. So now I kind of just move the majority over them to the middle. All right, check this out. So a lot faster. Those are two methods to brush in your rhinestones. Do whatever makes you happy. All right, so I have some in the corner there I just need to get. Ooh, those are crystal. Don't put those in there. What a mess, Lisa. So don't forget, if you like what's happening, watch till the end because you will like it even more. Okay, so we have that. Let's go ahead and put this back into our mason jar. Again, um, there is no uh, hard and fast rule about storing your rhinestones. Do whatever makes it easiest on you. I like to put them in mason jars because I just like mason jars. Um, whatever storage works best. Matt likes to do like smaller of the Gatorade bottles. Some of you like to do those little clippy boxes. Not a big deal. Um, can the templates be washed if the back gets fuzzy? Yeah, so you can rinse it under water, kind of get some of that debris off. Um, it will not, you know, bring your template back to 100%, but it will kind of get a little bit more life out of it. The whole reason why your templates kind of lose their stick or their effectiveness really is just because there's dirt getting on it. So if you can take the best care of your templates or kind of rinse them as you go, you're all set. Okay, so this is my second color. Now you have two options here. We can go ahead and put our third color right on top and it's going to line up. Um, I like to keep my actual layering stacking high of my templates as low as possible. So I'm going to take off this template and I'm gonna put my other color right on top of there. So let's go right here. And, oh my goodness, I have so many templates over here. So that here is my third color. We're gonna bring that back. Can you use spray adhesive if they've lost their stick? Uh, Todd, you know what? Um, I honestly don't know, but maybe if Gabe is still watching, um, he can write that down for an idea to try. Um, spray adhesive, I worry because it might be a little too tacky. Like it might bring bring back the stick too much. And then at that point, if your stick is too high, then you run the risk of, um, of ripping your template as you bring it back up. How do I store my templates? So check it out. This is the tape. This is tape that I cut at some point in time to put my tape down. Um, I stick my templates right on the paper backing that my tape was on because it's already cut to the right size. No big deal. And then I like to, um, keep them in, for me personally, I keep them in sheet protectors in a binder. Here's an example of a template that I have on Hotfix tape backing right now. Okay, so here's our third color, let's move on. So we're gonna do red. Um, Jen, definitely, you wanna do rhinestones. You have the starter kit, go ahead and crush it. You're gonna do great. Okay, so here's my red. Um, <laughs> just so you know, this is red with a special guest of crystal because I really made a mess once. So if you see crystal, there's nothing wrong with the template, it's I'm the problem. Okay, so we have that. 
go ahead and get these out of here. See how quickly I did that? All right, so let's go ahead and do this little firework. <laughs> and apparently there's cobalt in here too. My goodness. I really made a mess. I think the spray adhesive might be too much for it though. Make uncut the chalkboard. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Gabe. Like the the magic flock has like a slight tack to it. Uh, spray adhesive, honestly, if I'm being totally honest, I don't even like spray adhesive on my silhouette mat. So I know a lot of you will use a silhouette mat to revive your, um, the stickiness on it. There, I mean, honestly, there are several reasons why I don't like that. One of them being is I feel like it's too messy, like my hands will get too sticky. For me personally, I don't think it's worth the time investment. Um, I am all about just stocking up on uh, more mats. If you are super, you know, budget friendly, you can use Cricut mats with your silhouette. So that's an option. But for me, the cost of labor for myself versus buying a new mat is like not even close to worth it to restick my mats. So check this out. I have my three colors. I'm just going to smooth it. And then I'm going to smooth down these edges. You want to smooth down these edges if you're doing this method of cleaning up your stones because I didn't, I did not do that the other day and I got so many rhinestones underneath the tape. I think it might even make it in the video. Okay, so check it out. This is the Lisa Potts method of starting to clean up your rhinestones. Shake your chalkboard. I don't know if anyone else does that, but I like doing it. Okay, so let's go ahead, brush these stones up. I know someone said, see, I'm using the, uh, the monster brush. If you guys know me, you know I don't like using the monster brush, but I have, I have gotten to the point where I can, I can admit that sometimes the monster brush is useful, okay? I used to say, I hate the monster brush, I can't control what I'm doing, which for smaller designs, that's true, okay? That's totally true. However, for these bigger designs, bigger brush area, faster brushing. If you guys know me, you know I am shortcut queen. I do not like doing anything for longer than I have to. So if the monster brush gets the done job done faster, then hey, <sighs> I guess I'll use it. <laughs> yeah, near Laurel, monster brush or small brush? That's a good thing. Hey guys, while you're watching, tell me which brush you prefer. Do you like monster brush or do you like the, what do you, what do you call it, red brush? I am split. It depends. Okay, so here are my stones. Go over here. Mini red brush all day. Yanny. I, I have yet to hear Yanny. I guess I just have young, youthful ears, right? You know, you're young, what'd you hear? Yanny or Laurel? I heard Laurel. Are you serious? You don't know what's, what's happening? Oh my gosh. Gabe, how are you managing your department? Jonathan in here is Gabe's employee. So a lot of regular, so now we have people commenting about the video and brushes. Okay, so I'm gonna really smooth this. Now that I've done two colors, it does get a little bit trickier making sure that your stones get picked up. So I'm just smoothing on the ones that don't come up. Yeah, okay, check this out. So now I'm done layering. Okay, so let's pick up our design. I did notice earlier I had a little straggler next to my burst right here. So let's go ahead and pick that up. All right, so now to keep it safe, I'm gonna put this piece of paper backing on it. This is de definitely not the one that I was using, but hey, it works. And so now I can go over, let's take this off. I'm gonna set these to the side for now. Obviously I'm gonna store them, but let's, I heard a door slam. Is that Gabe coming in? Oh yeah, Gabe wouldn't slam. All right, so now, you guys remember this? Now we're gonna do the little uptake for our fireworks. So this is gonna be AB Crystal, if you remember. 
And let's go ahead and bring this over. Our little rhinestones. And I'm going to use my little brush. And I say this in one of my videos too, do not be afraid of brushing quickly. I mean, it's really not going to affect it unless you're smashing your brush down. So, hey, I want to be done as fast as possible, so I am going to brush quickly. Okay, so let's get that extra out of here. All right. So check that out. There is our little spray. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this extra that I cut right here. I cut this extra for layering. So I'm actually gonna trim off this little section and use that for my little spray. That way we're kind of reusing as much as we can. All right, so let's go right here. Let's move that to the side. All right, so you can horseshoe it. You can go to the side. I like I like going like making a hinge and dropping it. Matt's really good at horseshoeing it. I hate it. I hate doing that. Okay. All right, so we have that. Pick it up. Okay, so now we're all set. So now that I'm done brushing for what felt like forever, let's actually get to pressing. Okay. So let me kind of. Hi, hello. Okay, cool. So in the world's biggest non-surprise, I accidentally unplugged the microphone just now, um, but everything's good. Okay, so right here I have my little tank top. Now for this design, it does work fine on um, shirts, uh, like t-shirts. However, I do like it best on a racer back tank top because it's just, I don't know, the, I, you'll see at the end the firework looks awesome on it. So let's go ahead and set up our shirt to design. This is just a Bella Racerback. Pretty standard, pretty cutesy. And let's go back and I'm just going to pre-press, get rid of moisture and wrinkles. My heat press is set at uh, 325. Gabe says audio is having a lot of vibrancy. Is he making fun of me? Or is he saying there's something wrong with the audio? No, he's fun. Oh, he's making fun of me? What a jerk. What a jerk, oh my goodness. Okay, so we're gonna set this up. Now for my design, the whitest part of my vinyl is the white. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my white to align it because everything fits in there. So here's the thing. This tank top specifically has a pretty low scoop neck. So I'm gonna kind of bring it up as high as I can. And then I'm lining it off of my little corners here. Not using the tag because you know it's almost always wrong. And so we're gonna do this. Now, I put them on top of rhinestones and there were rhinestones on here. That could have been really bad. I had rhinestones on there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I am just going to do a tack. So uh, for our vinyl, for a Caesar Eat, Caesar, this is glitter. You need proper temperature, pressure, and what they call dwell time, amount of time on of heat on there. So when we're doing multiple colors, we don't wanna to have too much heat on the first color because it will shrink. So we're gonna go over it and I'm gonna bring this down and then just press for a couple seconds. Okay, then I'll do a couple more. So basically what we're doing is we're activating the, the vinyl to come off the carrier so that we can do our layering. Now, if I were to wash this right now, it will not stay, okay? It has not gotten enough dwell time on it, so it hasn't cured, basically, okay? So let's go ahead and do the red. So I'm just kind of fluffing this because I want it to like sit well. Um, if I were to do this again, I'd probably put a pressing pillow in here because the seams are kind of messing with me. But we're gonna kind of set this up. So this design is set up with a knockout or a space around our different colors. That kind of serves two purposes. It will uh, 
make it a little bit easier for us to line up, give us a little bit more forgiveness, but also it kind of defines the, the difference between the colors really well. All right. So let's go ahead, do a couple seconds. Now when you're doing something like this, you know, lift slowly, see that? Vinyl came up with it. So I need to press it a little bit longer before I take it off. So let's go ahead, bring that down. Good. So I, I went a little bit slower because I didn't want the risk of like yanking it off and then damaging it. All right, so let's do our last color. So we have that right there. And now I am going to still do attack for this. Even though this is my last color, I'm still gonna attack it down because I, I don't like the mark of my carrier sheet touching the other vinyl. So I'm gonna take it off, bring that up. Oh, that star looks so cute. I can't wait to show it to you guys closer. And now we're gonna go through and I'm gonna finish off this press for about 10 seconds. All right, so we have that set over here. We're just gonna kind of go from there. This is gonna give me my dwell time for all of this. And it's gonna make it really nice, okay? If you guys like this shirt now, wait till I put the rhinestones on it, okay? So check this out. But do you guys kind of see uh, what I'm talking about with this blue? I just think the blue looks really nice and bright, not vibrant since I guess that's a, a term to be made fun of but we have that right there and we have our rainbow white so it's really gonna glitter outside okay now what would I charge for this so <laughs> this is a gigantic design okay this is using a lot of vinyl a lot of rhinestones a lot of template material um, something like this I might ask Matt because he he's a little bit better at pricing something like this I probably um, let me see, three colors of glitter. So if we were to do just a glitter shirt, we would be looking at like 25 to $30, probably closer to the $30 end. And then if we were to do just a design like that with rhinestones, that's like a $40 thing. So honestly, I would charge no less than $50 for this shirt. Um, something like this, I would actually like build up to, make this a specialty item or even have like a build your own 4th of July shirt. So maybe do something where um, they can have this in one color, like one color easy weed, and then do rhinestones on the back or give them different options. So if they want the big shebang, they're paying $60, $70. But you can give them different options to do just one color easy weed or just easy weed three color or let's go up to glitter, that sort of thing. So you have different options with that. Um, you know, lots of fun. Okay. Do you remember these things? So let's go ahead, check my right, let's put my rhinestones on there. Now, I'm just peeling this off the paper backing off camera just because I don't wanna bump the top of my heat press or anything. So when you're peeling this off, just be careful. You don't want to um, have your tape like roll over on itself. And then actually, let me go to the front camera real quick because I wanna kind of point something out. Um, when I rolled this off, inspect your design. I accidentally bumped my redstones about right here. So I'm gonna take my tweezers and fix it. So just kind of inspect it. With a big design like this, you do run a risk of, you know, somewhat distorting it as you peel it up. So just keep an eye on it. Um, no, this is not two shirts. This is one big mega shirt. I'm gonna do another shirt after this, okay? Um, washing instructions, you definitely wanna tell them the standard wash, gentle, no fabric softener. Definitely tell them to hang dry. They probably won't, your customers probably won't. My shirt that I have of this, I just do normal wash and put it in the dryer and it's fine. So not all is lost. Okay, so check this out. If I were to put my design straight down like this, my, my rhinestones hang off on the side here. So I am going to bring this up as close as I can, but I'm going to angle it, okay? So I have 
my little rhinestone, my firework at the top, I want to be as high up as I can. And so that means on this side, I'm gonna angle it a little bit. So let me check over here, make sure I don't have a fold in my seam. So here are my fireworks. Oh, that silver, that AB crystal looks so good in the screen. All right, so let's go ahead, drop this down. And so because I am not doing any layering, because I'm gonna do my other rhinestones in a second press, I'm gonna do a full 15 second press with this and I'm at 325. Oh my goodness, guys, just enjoy the process of making this. I already told you, you'll be happy at the end. You'll get the file. Okay, so we're gonna do this full 10. So this is a Bella. This shirt actually, so don't forget Bella tends to run kind of small. Okay, I'm gonna separate this right away. I don't want the glue from my rhinestones to go through the back, that sort of thing. Now, this does tend to run small, so this is a large. Don't forget these shirts are more of a like, smallest woman in the world fit. All right, so hot peel. Let's go ahead and peel the hot fix tape up. Don't forget, I can save this tape and reuse it. So I'm gonna just set it to the side. Okay, so check this out. Chew, chew. Look at that, so sparkly. We're not done though, okay? So now we're gonna take it and I'm gonna kind of hang it off the bottom here because now I need to line up the bottom part of my of my design. Fat guys like me and Bella do not go in hand in hand. Todd, you don't like those racerback tanks? They feel, you know, they, they flatter everyone, right? Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm just gonna kind of line it up. So I'm gonna angle it a little bit to fit that way. Okay. So here is my little, what is this part of the firework called? Firework trail? Fire, I don't know, tail? I don't know, this part, okay? So we're just gonna cover that and let's go ahead and do our second press. 15 seconds. Okay. Shut up, is it really the time? Is it really 350? Oh my goodness, I'm gonna do the next one really fast. Do you guys wanna see another rhinestone shirt? Or are you over it? Are you so over it? Okay, separate. Okay, good. All right. So check this out. Let me turn this so we can see it. So now we have our 4th of July right here. Check this out. Oh my gosh, it looks even better in the screen. Do you see this, Jonathan? Look at it on this screen. It looks so nice. Um, I wonder if Gabe will come in and try it on for everyone. He should. he should. So pretty. So don't forget, someone's gonna win this at the end of the live. All right, so keep that in mind. Someone's gonna win this. Let's go back to the board and we're gonna super speed do our next design. So let's go over here. Let's move this out of the way and clean up our rhinestone colors. Brush, 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 brush. Get these out of here. So this design, I'm gonna do a normal crystal. I'm not gonna use AB crystal. So I'm not going to use the stones that are on the board here. Um, yes, Gabe would like to model it. Can you please send Gabe, I mean, everyone wants Gabe to model it. Can you please send Gabe a message and let him know his, his um, physique is requested in the training room. And he should be fine because he gave me a hard time about me thinking he uses coffee creamer. He said, do I look like I use coffee creamer? So obviously he is in peak modeling position. All right, so let's go right here. I'm just gonna dump it this way. This way doesn't always work. Sometimes they fly out the top, so uh, definitely didn't. Oh, and, uh, and quite conveniently, Gabe's not watching anymore, apparently. Did you tell him why or did you just say come here? Okay, good, 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 good. So let's go ahead and do our first color. So this is our baseball flag, baseball flag rhinestone design. If you guys have gone to a trade show, you may recognize this design. We actually display this a lot. So this right here, we have little stars on the inside, so this is gonna be crystal. Okay guys, I'm gonna move a little bit more quickly because we're kind of going a, a long time and I wanna get to your codes and stuff. So let's go right here. 
do a bunch of rhinestones. We're gonna brush. Oh yeah, look at all this rhinestone brushing, so cool. Yep, we're going. Okay, so we have this going. So we have, what, 226. How many people did Matt have at the most yesterday? Oh, so I'm already beating him? I was gonna say we could do a giveaway if I could beat Matt's numbers, but I don't know. Cause I was thinking like, these templates take up a lot of space, it's a lot of material, so people would really like to get these pre-cuts. You know, that way they don't have to cut it, they can save their flock material. But I need like a goal, you know? I don't know. You know, do you have any suggestions? At least 300. At least 300. Oh, hey, oh, come here. Uh, can you go to this? They need you. They need me? Yes. Last time somebody needed me, I had to wear a shirt. Can you try this on for everyone? No, <laughs> there's no chance. <laughs> this is the least. No, my it doesn't God. even. It doesn't even cover his body sitting flat. I'll put it on over my shirt. It feels a lot less awkward. Okay. Also, I'm going to do... I was thinking about doing additional... Oh, someone's going to win that. Don't stretch it out. Um, I'm going to do additional giveaways. I'm thinking about giving <laughs> some more winners the templates, the pre-cut templates, but they need to hit a certain number. What do you think is a good number? For what? For it to give away. I'm going to give them these templates, too. If Sir, we can get to a certain, certain number, number of, of live attendees. Two, the 250 back. sounds fair. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's outrageous. I would, I would literally look like one of those like you really ugly meatheads. No offense if there's an ugly meathead in here. Turn around. Why the back? Because yeah, it looks the best. <laughs> I look fabulous. Oh my gosh! What is okay. This? Look. It's like you're proving that I have to keep. <laughs> it haunts me. Okay. You plan that? No, I didn't know that right, was there. I'm going to go take this off. Okay, so here's the thing. If we can get to 250 live attendees, then I will give away the baseball heart, the baseball flag template. If we can get up to 300 live attendees, then I will also give away the, um, the fireworks template, okay? So keep liking, commenting, sharing. If you want, I'm going to go back to brushing. If you want, thank you, to win, then definitely start sharing, okay? So let's go right here. Let's cut our tape. Okay, so this is super speed rhinestone layering. You guys know the process. If you are new and don't know what I'm doing, I have explained it earlier, so definitely check out the replay. So let's go ahead and do our tape. I have to, oh, I made a goal to go up to 250 and now we have even less people. So we can tell Gabe that he offended everyone with his terrible wearing of that shirt. Okay, so let's go right here. I'm gonna smooth down my first color. I just popped some out of place right here, so I'm gonna use my hand to nudge them back in. This is because I think I did hesitate a little bit. All right, so you have that set. Let's smooth down the sides. And let's smooth down over here. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's go through here. I know people are leaving. Someone's saying, Lisa, they're leaving. Well, looks like I get to score me some awesome templates to keep. All right, so let's go through here. All right, so let's go get these, these stones out of here. All right, so let's go ahead, brush, brush, brush. Let's get these out of here. So I'm just kind of taking this, going from there. I know, the bottom of the fireworks on the back of the shirt look really funny. Yeah, uh, that's part of the reason why I did them at an angle because the first time we did it, it literally <laughs> it literally looked like there were fireworks coming straight out of your butt. <laughs> like, it was right in the middle of your back. It was so funny. I, had, I just kept laughing and laughing and laughing about it. But it didn't bother me enough to not wear it and everyone complimented my shirt the 4th of July a couple years ago. Okay, so we have that. Let's go ahead and clean up these stones. Let's go right here. 
Let's do that. All right, so color one, done. Let's go ahead and bring this up. Keep our hinge, we want to keep that to the side. So let's go ahead and do our second color. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's move quickly. This design is on our website. Don't buy it yet. Okay, so we got that. So this is going to be, because these are stripes, these are red. So let's go ahead, do this. Brush, 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 well, pour stones, pour stones, pour stones. And then we're gonna brush. Guys, I'm moving so quickly right now. Oh my goodness. So let's go ahead and do this. Oh my gosh, Bino just said so quickly that you're gonna mess up. With Lisa's rainbow red rhinestones apparently. I just saw so many colors in here from all the messes I've made. Great, right, so we have a couple missing here. Let's go ahead and brush that. Let's go right here. Coo, 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 coo. Do you watch Brooklyn Nine Nine? They say that on there like "coo coo 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 coo." All right, so let's go right here. Let's get the majority off. So I have a few missing here. No big deal. Let's do a little pile. All right, so we're at two twenty six. Don't forget two fifty. This template will be given away. If we get to three hundred, then we're also going to give away that giant rhinestone design. That's probably like. I think that took me almost four feet of template material. So that is a really big value with that one. Okay, so let's go right here. So we have a couple more missing. Let's go ahead and brush these in. Do your pile. Okay, so check this out. I got crystal stone in here. Don't want that. So let's go ahead and get that out of here. And so for these last ones, I think I'm just going to use my tweezers to, to fix that. So let's kind of go right here. Actually, no, I'm not going to use tweezers. That's ridiculous. All right, so let's go right here. We're switching to little brush. I think there's more control in situations like this. Little pile. All right, all right, good, good, good. Cool, 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 cool. Not at 250 yet, guys. All right, so let's go right here. We got 250? Did you take us? Okay. Okay, so we got this template's gonna be given away because we're at 250. Don't forget, if we get to 300 live attendees, you will be get you will get the firework live template. Not live template, sorry. Rhinestone template. That one is a huge design. It's 13 inches by 18 inches. It's a super awesome rhinestone design. It's really great for your customers. It's super great for you or your friends, or your family. Just a good 4th of July design. So let's go right here. I have one little guy right here. 300? Stop it. Really? <gasps> no, and I don't see 300. You saw 302? 307? I'm at 297 on my screen. Cool. Good job, guys. So, I mean, what are we thinking? Should we give away more stuff? Matt's not here. So if we get to 350... If we get to 350, then I will also give away both of these design files to a winner, okay? So 350, both of the design files, okay? If we can get to that, which are also pretty close. And while I'm doing this, Mino, think of another prize. Okay, so check this out. So here's our second color. My stones are kind of in the way down here, so I'm going to brush them down a little bit. Oops, I made a mess. So check that out. Coo, coo, coo. All right, so let's smooth these. And because I'm gonna clean up my color while we're here, I'm gonna smooth these corners. Stop at 350. So it's these files. Okay, um, I mean, should we keep going? Okay, so if we get to 400, I will give a 25 gross of crystal rhinestones. Okay, so 400 live attendees, we're gonna get a 25 gross of crystal rhinestones, okay? Don't forget, if you guys are joining from your shares, I am doing a giveaway at the end. I am also giving coupon codes, so you definitely want to stay around for that. Don't come and ditch. For those of you who just joined, I'm Lisa. I like to make things. Stop it. Really? <laughs> okay. Um, 
Are you writing down what I'm saying? Because I'm, you should, you should write down from now on because I'm going to start thinking of stuff. Okay, so now we're at 400. If we get, okay, I'm going to make this really hard on you. If we get to 450, what, what do you think I'm allowed to give away? I want to give away something really cool. Keep it going? Okay, so if we get to 450, I will give away, um, oh, help me. I will give away, the last one was a 25 gross of crystal rhinestones. Then I had both these design files. So um, if we get, we're going to jump right up to 500. If we get to 500, I will give away um, five feet of magic flock. Okay, so that's 500 live attendees, five feet of magic flock. Okay. So let's go ahead. I'm going to keep peeling this up. So don't forget, we're doing big giveaways at the end. We're doing coupon codes. Don't join and leave, okay? So 500, five feet of magic flock. Okay, so let's get these rhinestones out of here. We're cleaning up this mess. All right, so here is our last template. We are stacking these colors. This is how we line up our designs. This is how we get them set up. Okay, so check this out. So we're going to kind of set up our design. We're going to line up our corners. And good, I don't see any of the rhinestone holes underneath it, which means we do not have overlapping stones. All right, guys, I see 421. If you guys want five feet of magic flock, you better get sharing. We got to get people in here, okay? All right, so let's go ahead. Let's do our last color. All right, check that out. Get these last spots filled in. Check this out. Hey, you guys, I almost didn't do a big giveaway like this because I was like, well, everyone's at work right now. We won't get numbers, but check it out. Now that you guys did this, I know you guys are totally capable. So I'm going to make my giveaways during the day a million times harder because I know you guys can do it. So let's do another one, uh, 451. So don't forget what is on the line. We have five feet of this template material, okay? So this template material is a really high value. Five feet is definitely um, a nice chunk of change. So again, if we get to 500 live attendees, we will give away five feet of this template material. So what I'm doing is I'm just brushing in the last few spots for my rhinestones. I'm keeping my brush nice and flat, using a gentle touch. And now you can see I have a couple more missing, so I just have to kind of go through there. All right, so now I'm all good. Gentle touch. Let's kind of brush these out of here. We're all set. And then I have one little guy missing, so I'm just going to use my tweezers for that because I don't think it's worth using a little pile, okay? So let's go right here. Let me grab my tweezers. And actually, I have a couple extra in here too, so let's get those out of there. So... I know Matt doesn't like using tweezers. I like using them on occasion. If I can ever pick up the rhinestones. Check it out. Where are we at? 45. Guys, we're only a little bit away. I will give away five feet of magic flock material if we can get to 500 live attendees. Oh, we're getting towards the end of this design. So you better make it count. All right, so let's go through here. Let's kind of go through that. So check it out. Here's our little baseball flag. I have some rhinestones under here, not a big deal. I'm just going to kind of get rid of those later. All right, so we have this set up. Stop it. We got it? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I'm going to do another big jump. If we get to 600 live attendees, I will give away... Um, do you have any ideas? Did Gabe, get, Gabe give you any ideas? Okay, he said keep going. Okay, so if, I, if we get up to 600 live attendees, I will give you guys... Um, what is that over there? Here, go to the uh, go to the front camera. Okay, so this is what six hundred. You get all this vinyl right here that I found on the extra materials. So this is probably what this is glitter black. You'll get a bunch of glitter black vinyl. What? He said, "Keep it going." <laughs> and if you guys win this and Matt's mad at me, just um, you guys told me to do it. All right, so 600 live, you're going to get all this vinyl. Okay, so let's go back over here. I'm going to go back to this right, real quick. So let's go ahead and peel this up.
Check it out. Here's our flag. We go through and stick it on this paper to keep it safe. All right, so we're ready to press, okay? Check this out. Here's our flag, let's go to our heat press. All right, so let's go over. I have my J America glitter t-shirt. You guys know I love this. It's got that nice little glitter threads in it, but it's super soft still, okay? Everyone left because they don't want vinyl. Okay, so I did my pre-press. Flip over here. Um, I'm gonna trim this closer because I don't need this much space. I'm trying to go quickly because I know this slide is taking forever. Even though I know Matt does really long lives, I get super insecure about mine going more than an hour. Okay. So don't forget, if you were here, don't leave. So we're gonna do a coupon code at the end and a bunch of giveaways. Okay. So for right here, I'm going to bring my design in, use my armpits, line it off of the collar, and then let's do this thing. Let's do 15 seconds. Uh, there we go. All right, so let's go through. I'm going to, oops, clear a space for you so I can show you some other stuff. Oh, yeah, it's hard to hear me. Oh, I'm going to go right back up front, too. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's go right here. I'm going to peel my hot fix tape up now. See that? That was dramatic. And now we have our little rhinestone flag. <laughs> Thank you.